Today's video relates to parsing NIH funding. You may recognize the website in front of you. This is the report tool from NIH, which allows you to determine the amount and destination of outgoing funds from the NIH in support of research. I've created a small query and extracted some information into an Excel spreadsheet. This corresponds to three states, Georgia, uh, California and Maryland for three distinct years, 2013, 15, and 17. The columns are easy to understand. We have the organization, the amount of funding, the city and state, and the year. Moreover, I looked only at the top five awardees within each state. If we move over to our studio, uh, you'll see that in the notebook, I'm loading some packages that are important uh, for this example. Um, and I use the read under bar XLSX function to read in the spreadsheet directly. Now I'm uh, dividing the funding column by a million, uh, so the numbers do not appear to be obnoxiously large. So in this particular case, uh, Emory University had $325 million uh, in funding for the year 2017. The best thing to do really is to plot this information. All right, so what's happening here is that in both California and Georgia, you see that there is an upward trend over the three years that um, uh, correspond to our data. Maryland looks a little bit interesting in that apparently they have not recovered as a state um, in terms of the top five producers um, to the funding levels of 2013. What we might want to do is look at the variance in the funding for the top five organizations uh, within Maryland. What we wind up seeing is that indeed there is large variation, much more so than in California and Georgia. Now, Johns Hopkins is in Maryland and they typically get lots of grant money. They're a very productive institution. So if there are concerns about what they're bringing in, we could filter uh, the data to include only the state of Maryland, group by year and organization. That's what this table gives us. And rest assured, uh, Hopkins is bringing in money uh, on an increasing uh, slope across those three years. Now what we do find is that some organizations, uh, such as SAIC, only made the cut, so to speak, in the year 2013. They didn't show back up in uh, 15 and 17. And, and that could be the case uh, with some of these other organizations. And, and the, some of the grants uh, were pretty low uh, in comparison to the large magnitude that Hopkins was bringing in. The next step could involve spreading out the financial information for each year across columns. This is what a financial analyst might prefer. And this is really easy to do in R. It's hardly a challenge. Uh, we can use the spread function, which I uh, talked about in a previous video. Uh, specifically, this is the view that we want. We are spreading out the um, funding amounts uh, across each of the unique values for the years. That's why we have three columns, 2013, 15, and 17. And this bears out what we just discovered with the state of Maryland, that some institutions, organizations across all states did not make the top five for each of those years. Um, now we have some interesting artifacts here. Notice that University of California, San Francisco, the name here has a, a comma. It was, looks like a, a data entry error or something like that, um, which is why it appears that uh, they got funding in five, excuse me, 2013, but not in 15 and 17. But the larger point is, is that you can, you might want to filter out organizations that only got funding across all three years, so you can see that they're consistently top performers. Now, a way to do that is to spread the um, funding across the three columns and only respecting complete cases. In other words, institutions that got funding in all three years, and you see here they are. Now you might want to flip that around. Uh, we could actually just try to see anybody who got funding in any year, uh, but not across all three years, right? So this gives us that information. Um, now what you do with this information is up to you. Uh, administrators agonize over this stuff and uh, it's the subject of a lot of uh, boardroom discussion. So I hope you've enjoyed this.